Howdy folks, and welcome back to Subnautica with the mighty Jingles. And when last we left our intrepid gnome hero, I've given up on calling him fearless because, well, quite frankly, I wasn't fooling anybody. We finally managed to get our hands on some kyanite, which is going to allow us to construct the upgrades that will allow us to take the Cyclops and the Prawn Suit down to depths of up to 1,700 metres. We've got the Cyclops parked next to the power station that we've built by the thermal vents next to the cove tree and we're just scraping these little Minot bastards off the hull. They love to chew on the power cables and drain our precious energy cells. Some of you were saying in the last video that all you have to do to get rid of these little things is turn on the Cyclops shield generator and it basically forces them all off the hull and that's a very very good idea which probably explains why I didn't think of it. What can I say? <laughs> I'm crap. <laughs> you know it to be true. Anyway, with our power cells recharged and uh, very quickly draining them by running silent running and the sonar while navigating our way back up through the Lost River to the surface, it's time to head back to Fort Jingles in order to get some of these, well, what should hopefully be the last upgrades I'm going to need in order to actually get this game finished. Fort Jingles just up ahead. I'm gonna park this thing as close as I dare without grounding out the bottom. And that should do. Jingles, remember to turn the engine off. So I at least remember to turn the engine off. Still left Silent running on though, didn't I? doesn't make a lot of sense that silent running should still be draining power while the engines are switched off, but, well, I'll, I'll just work here. Anyway, going to unplug all the power cells that we exhausted on the trip back and get them charged up using the power cell charger at Fort Jingles. There we are. Home sweet home. Where's Boo? Boo Boo, where you at? check on the uh, bio generator. Ooh. Well, it still has fuel. Don't urgently need to top it off. Did I see a little boo? I did. Hello, boo. Do you want a biscuit? Of course you do. Fetch. Good dog. Who's a good boy then? Right, anyway. I'm going to have to get these power cells recharged and that's going to put a strain on the bio reactor. So we're going to toss a few more shrimp on the barbie couple of crash fish ought to do it. Crash fish are a fantastic source of fuel for the bioreactor. I think they're second only to alien feces that you find from the sea treaders. You've got space for more though. The spade fish are breeding out of control. We'll go and grab a few of those. Pop those little buggers in the oven. They died for a good cause. Your sacrifice will be remembered. And now that I've grabbed a wiring kit and some polyaniline from storage, I should be able to make the Cyclops Thermal Reactor module. But that's going to require the fabricator on board the Cyclops. This is going to be a huge help with my power problems. Turning off silent running when I don't need it would also be a huge help to my power problems, but first things first. Cyclops Thermal Reactor Module. Let's go and get this sucker plugged in. I've left one upgrade slot free for this. And there we go. Ooh, yes. Right. I have no idea just exactly how effective this is. I know that you have to be in water where the temperature is greater than 35 degrees for it to start working. And the only place I'm going to find water at that kind of temperature around here is near a thermal vent. But I know that there is a thermal vent nearby. I still have silent running on here. Look at this. Look at how quickly my power is being drained, even without the engine on. I've just lost 2%. And I still haven't realised, because I'm such a genius, <laughs> I still haven't realised that it's the silent running that's absolutely killing my batteries. I mean, what else could it be? It's the only thing that was switched on, <laughs> but I still haven't made the connection. So I'm not even going to make it as far as the thermal vent that's just like 200 metres away. There we go. 
battery's dead. So I kind of give up on the idea of immediately testing out the thermal reactor module at a conveniently close geothermal vent and instead I unload all of the nickel from the Cyclops storage and head back to Fort Jingles to get some depth modules built. So what exactly am I going to need for the Prawn Suit Mark II depth upgrade? The existing Mark I module, I've got everything else, the Kyanite, I just need to grab some lithium and I've got plenty of that. Oh yeah baby, here we go. This has been a long time coming. Gotcha. Right, now, what do I need for the Cyclops depth module? Mark three, the existing Mark II module. Some plasteel ingots, right. Which is a titanium ingot and lithium. Do I have a titanium ingot? Well, let's grab the lithium first. If I don't have a titanium ingot, I can make one. I've got plenty of titanium. I do have a titanium ingot, all right, nice and easy. Plasteel ingot, one in number. Was it one or two? We'll soon find out. It looks like it was just the one. There it is. Cyclops depth module mark three. So now the Cyclops and the prawn suit, once I've plugged these things in, are going to have a maximum crush depth of 1700 meters. And according to the notes that I found in the Space Viking experimental facility, the last alien facility is at a depth of 1400 meters. I haven't found it yet. Up until now, I've not been able to go that deep. But now we have everything that we need, in theory, in order to get this shit done. But before we head off, I'm just going to stockpile some materials to build a second thermal power generator down at the power plant near the cove tree because well you're not seeing it because I'm cutting all the boring bits out but it takes a long time to charge 12 power cells and a single thermal power generator can barely keep up with the load so we're gonna get some more built hello boo you want a biscuit of course you do good boy right Back into the depths. 1700 meters crush depth. Ha! Do your worst. Oh shit, me and my big mouth. What is that? Well, it's not actually doing any damage. It's probably just a warper. Is he coming back? Oh, I think we've lost him. Oh. Is that a thermal vent? That is a thermal vent. I wonder. I'm going to conduct a little experiment here because I've got the thermal power generator installed in the Cyclops engine. If I park the Cyclops over that vent, just how efficient is it going to be? 57% power. Sonar off, but silent running on. And I'm, I don't actually appear to be losing power. I should have lost 2% of my power by now, and it's actually going up. Oh wait, no. Yes. I've no idea exactly how hot it is out there. But it's hot enough to hurt me, even in a reinforced diving suit, so... That is fantastic news. Not immediately, of course, because I'm only going to see those kind of temperatures here in the Lost River when I'm parked over a thermal vent, but where I'm going? It's going to get very, very hot. And if I can actually gain power with silent running engaged, while not using the sonar, admittedly, well, that can only be good news. Cove tree up ahead, so we're almost at the halfway point. Power station should be over there. And of course, there are thermal vents next to the power station. That's why I picked it as the location for the power station. So I can park the Cyclops over the thermal vents while I'm charging up any dead power cells in the power station. Which should drastically cut down on the amount of time I need to spend here replenishing my batteries. There it is. Well, this is all very good news for a change, isn't it? Something's got to go drastically wrong. <laughs> Well, it wouldn't be me if it didn't. 
I'm not sure what can go wrong at this point. But I'm sure we're going to find out sooner rather than later. Okay, let's uh, use the external cameras. So I don't crash the Cyclops into the stack. And park it up right about there. No, not quite. Almost. Swing the arse around a bit. And that should do. It's going to reverse a little. Yeah. That should be just about perfect. Right. 37%. But we shouldn't be losing power. In fact, we should be gaining power slightly. Well, slightly. Anyway, engine's off. Silent running. Off. Hey, you can teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> there we go. 38%. It's definitely working. Right, power cells. As usual, I've got a bunch of fully charged cells sitting in storage, so we're going to take those and swap them out for most of the ones that have been drained on the trip down. I mean, it's good that my power is going up when I'm parked over this vent, but I don't think it's going to be quite as efficient at charging power cells as actually taking them out and plugging them into a power cell charger. Oh, hello. You can see that one is actually charging up in place. Uh, that one isn't. It's down to 10%. So we'll swap this one out because, well, I don't know how long it's going to take to charge a cell just using the thermal module. Ooh, that one is actually charging quite quickly indeed. Anyway, stick to the plan, Jingles. People were saying in the comments of the last video, Jingles, why don't you build a second power cell charger in the power station if it's taking you so long to charge up all of your expended power cells? Uh, and I did think about it, but, well, this is why I'm going to build a second thermal power generator at the power station, because the load on the system imposed by putting a second power cell charger in and charging up four cells at the same time just wouldn't be able to cope. I'd be draining power faster than I'd be generating it, and that's why I've brought the materials that I'm going to need to build a second thermal power generator. The first generator that I stuck down over there isn't terribly efficient either. Again, people were saying in previous videos that I could actually build one of these thermal plants right on top of the thermal vent and then just stick a power transmitter next to it. Again, very, very good idea, which probably explains why I didn't think of it. But this will do. My first generator is only recording a temperature of 54 degrees, so it's not terribly efficient. Let's see how much better this one is, since it's closer. 63 degrees. So that's more than doubled my power generation rate. And while those spare cells are charging, there is one other thing that I need to do down here by the power station before we venture further into the depths drop a bloody navigational beacon so I don't get lost again <laughs> while cruising around in a cyclops on 10% power trying to find my bloody power station. It would be really embarrassing if I was to do that again. And just so there's no confusion I'm gonna call this one power station. Right, even I should have problems trying to get lost with that in place. So, nav beacon placed, power cells fully charged, ramblers, let's ramble. I shouldn't actually need to swap out any of these fully charged power cells. Since I left the Cyclops parked over that thermal vent, the ones in place should actually be running at maximum capacity. Let's just quickly go and check. Yep. 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 And the other side. Oh yeah, baby, now we're talking. Right. Let's get this thing underway. I'm going to do some serious exploring. Engines on. The penny has finally dropped regarding silent running. 
There's no threat around here. I don't need to be running it. So let's see just exactly how efficient the Cyclops is when you're not running silent running sonar. And you're just cruising along at low speed. Does seem pretty efficient, doesn't it? Not the experience I've had up until now. <laughs> I mean, I've managed. I've gotten by. Uh, purely by building twice the number of power cells that most other people come down this far with. And it's worked. But there were better ways of doing it. Before too long, though, I'm heading into unexplored territory. And I can barely see my hand in front of my face. So... That's much better. Sonar. Show me where I'm going. I've been pretty lucky. I've made it down this far without actually bumping into anything nasty. But that looks like a really big open cave up ahead. Couple of snurglies swimming around. Down to 72%. I've definitely not been here before. The... Oh. No, he's not doing any damage to the hull. Uh, we picked up a passenger there. Bloody Minox chewing on the power cables. I did stop briefly a few minutes back to scrape some of them off the hull. I still haven't figured out you can just dislodge them using the shield generator although it does seem fairly obvious but thanks to that thermal reactor module even with silent running sonar and parasites sucking away at my power reserves the rate of power drain is actually it's fairly negligible I could definitely get used to this More unexplored territory up ahead. I've definitely never been here. What's making that noise? It's not the warper. It's not that snurgly. Something making a noise like that would have to be fairly big. Oh, I think I've heard of this place. This is the lava castle. I, what is that? Did you see that? That. That's... That's a very big thing, making a very bad noise. I don't like that very much. <laughs> what the hell is that? It's a leviathan of some kind, but it doesn't look anything like a reaper. It doesn't even look like a ghost leviathan. It's... Is it just me, or does that sound like a hungry noise to you? Yeah, I think we're going to give that thing a very, very wide berth. Stop making that noise, you! You're not impressing anybody! It did go the other way, didn't it? Yeah, I think we're going to stick to this side. Let's see if we can pick something up on the external cameras. Oh, shit! Don't see me. Don't see me. <laughs> Don't see me. What the hell is that thing? Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he went the other way. Yeah, we'll be fine on this side. <laughs> oh, whoa, wait a minute. What was that? Did I just see a cave entrance? Where did that thing go? Okay, yeah, yeah. It, it, it didn't see us. How do you know that for sure, Jingles? Well, I'm not dead. <laughs> no, 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 go away. I want to go this way. Look, there's something there. There is definitely something there. Okay. Sonar off. Come on, 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 come on. Some heat vents here as well. I should be fine leaving the Cyclops here. Power steady at 
engine off. Now, I realise that the noise indicator down there in the bottom left is reading a zero, but I noticed that now, <laughs> at the time, all I was thinking was, with that big bastard swimming around, I'm going to leave the silent running on just in case. And I should be okay with the thermal reactor module. Oh, hello. Natural structure at the centre of this chamber. Massive energy signature. Well, that could be very good news or very bad news. We're going to swap that power cell out. 49%. It doesn't seem to be charging. Neither does that one. Then again, it's not really draining either. And that's good enough for me. So we'll swap out the one that was a 1%. And then it's all aboard the prawn suit. We're going exploring. Some warpers around here. And I don't want to actually land in the lava. Because the prawn suit's tough, but it ain't that tough. And what is in here? Got to be some good stuff. I just have to... What the fuck? What was that? What was that? What was what was that? Oh, I really hope that's not the sound that a big bastard snurgly leviathan makes when he's ripping a cyclops apart. <laughs> well, if it was, it's too late now. has got to lead somewhere. Oh, I really hope the Cyclops is okay. Because it's a really long walk back to the surface. Yeah, I don't think I'm alone in here. And I don't think it's the boomerang fish. Oh. Yeah, there are snuggly swimming around in here with me. Ow! Five percent. Bugger off. Yeah, he doesn't like the drill arm much. Looks like each attack from those things takes five percent of my hull integrity. I could do without these noises. They're not helping. Oh, up ahead. Space Viking stuff. This must be it. Right. Look for a way in. Oh. There's warpers down here as well. Well, makes sense. They are space viking guards, patrolmen, that sort of thing. Oh shit, didn't make the jump. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hold up to something and no when yeah, jump jets, jump jets, jump jets. Come on, come on, come on. Don't want to fall into the lava. And we're going to live. <laughs> right. Let's try that again. There was a warper. Over oh, there he is. Has he seen me? Uh, let's go the other way just in case. I mean, I really don't want to get pulled out of the prawn suit. Down. Oh, well, actually, it's only 50, 51 degrees. I could survive that in the reinforced diving suit. Still. They also like to take chunks out of my ass, so let's try to avoid that. Let's see if we can find a way in. I saw an entrance in the side, but getting to it's going to be a bit tricky. I need to jump to one of these support cables. There it is. Oh, it's going to be jump jets from here. Aided by the grappling arm. And we're in. Well, I don't know what this place is. It can't be the facility that was mentioned in the notes that I found, because it's only 1,200 metres down. Oh, that's a big-ass pile of ion cubes. Wait, what was that? What's making those noises? Oh my god! Robot Snurglies! Kill it! Kill it! I don't know if these things are hostile, but... Ah, better safe than sorry. Robot face crabs. <laughs> yeah, he's just waiting for me to get out of this prawn suit so he can take a chunk out of my ass, isn't he? 
Actually, speaking of the prawn suit, I have taken a fair amount of damage getting here. It's at 67%, so I am actually going to get out of the prawn suit and find my repair tool. Get some repairs done before I go any further into this facility and find something that's capable of doing some serious damage to my small, pink, and perfectly formed gnomish arse. That should just about do. Right. There was a big ass pile of ion cubes just waiting to be drilled around the corner. There it is. And I'm certainly not going to pass up an opportunity to stock up on ion cubes. Oh, there he is. And again, he's not attacking. Right. Let's get ourselves some good shit. Storage on the prawn suit is empty, I think. And I've got three storage modules, so I can definitely carry this lot. Yeah, I see you, you little bastard. You better keep your distance. These are my ion cubes now. So much loot. Oh, need to get closer. Yep, there we go. And this should actually regenerate the ion cubes. I should be able to come back if I need to and drill fresh cubes from this thing. That's it. Got them all. Right. Oh, that looks like a teleporter. Probably needs a purple tablet, though. Well, I've got two on me, but, well, yeah, I'm going to save them. I can always activate it when I come back if I don't need the purple tablets for... Like, for example, to take this force field down. Ah! Robot crab thing. Bugger off. Yeah, you're just waiting for me to get out of this prawn suit so you can jump on my face, aren't you? Well, I'm wise to your tricks, sunshine. Yeah, I see your little friend hiding around the corner. You're going to get your ass stomped. These little buggers are tough. Oh, not tough enough. Killed that one. Where did his friend go? I hear you. Where did it go? See, I'm brave now. I've got my man pants on. I'm in the prawn suit. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'm going to have to get out of the prawn suit to place this tablet and get the force field down. Yeah, yeah, it's a purple tablet. It's not like you haven't seen one before. Come on, don't have all day. All right, what's in here? It's got to be good, or they wouldn't have hidden it behind a force field. Ooh, blue tablet. Never seen one of those before. I'm going to scan it first, so I can replicate it in a fabricator if I need to later. Because I've been caught out by that before. And then we're going to have it. And back into the safety of my man pants. Now, let's see what there is deeper inside. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the... What? You can't fool me into thinking you mean no harm just because you've got a female voice. I see what black widows do. Okay, that's just another entrance. So I must have missed something. Oh, yep, yeah, there's a ramp down. Keep hearing more of those robot spider face crab things. Oh, hello. Data terminal and another force field and another ion cube. So it was wise to save the purple tablet. Unless this needs a blue tablet. Let's grab the ion cube first since it's, you know, just there. And we're going to clear out storage. Plenty of inventory space. And let's see what's on this data terminal. What secrets lie within? Fossil data. Doesn't sound particularly interesting. What's this about a mass extinction event a thousand years ago? I'm sure it's probably relevant, but I'm, I'm not really seeing the connection right now. Right, anyway, what's behind the force field jingles? Let's find out. Hopefully, it'll be a purple tablet. And, yep. Of course, this means I'm out of purple tablets, and I won't be able to activate the teleporter on the way out. But, yo, shit! That little bastard scared the shit out of me. Okay, right, so they are hostile. <sighs> Let's see if I can get a scan. Wait, well, it's not that hostile, is it? it? 
whatever, scanned it, and then it ran off. Okay, got my man pants back on. Now let's see who's boss. Yeah, that's right, Sunshine. You mess with the wrong gnome. It is dead, isn't it? I think I got it. Right, anyway, force field's down. That's on the other side of the door, Jingles. Is this the alien power generation facility they were talking about? It does look kind of power generatory. There's another data terminal up ahead. Well, actually, it looks like there's another two data terminals up ahead. Let's see if I can get a scan. Yep, alien thermal plant. I've heard about this place. Alien power facility. Fully automated. Uninterruptible. Converts local thermal energy into electric current and 90% efficiency. Is that good? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not an engineer. <laughs> Presumably it is good. Anyway, let's see what's on this data terminal. Give me your secrets. Ooh! This is it. Primary containment facility. Constructed within a natural chasm connected to this cave network south southeast area of volcanic activity depth 1.4 kilometers. That's it. South southeast. Right. Okay. Don't forget south southeast jingles. But there was something else up there on the balcony. Yeah, this is the way up. Oh, it's reacting to my presence. But this is gold, so it has to be the really good shit. Ooh. Ooh! Ooh! Ion power data. I've, I've heard about this. New battery and power cell blueprints which leverage advanced ion energy. Ho 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 I'm doing the happy dance. I'm doing the happy dance. I've heard about these ion power cells. And ion batteries. Apparently they have five times the capacity of your regular batteries and power cells. Of course, that means they take five times as long to charge as your regular batteries and power cells, but five times the capacity. Never mind the quality, feel the width. Back to the Cyclops, which I was very relieved to see had not actually been swallowed whole by a giant monster space snurgly. And uh, let's have a look and see what we need to make one of these new ion power cells. Ion batteries are just iron cubes, gold and silver. Well, I think we've got that. Yes, indeed we do. It's almost as if, before coming down here, I did a little bit of investigating on the internet. <laughs> to find out exactly what would be required to make ion batteries and ion power cells. Almost. Right, here we go. Ion batteries. A regular battery has 100 power. An ion battery has 500. And that's great, but I'm not really too bothered about ion batteries. The reason I need ion batteries is because each ion power cell requires two ion batteries, as well as a little bit of silicon rubber that I just so happen to have lying around. And that's the bad boy right there. Just to compare a regular power cell to an ion power cell. Regular power cell, 100% charge, 200 capacity. Ion power cell, 100% charge, 1000 capacity. That's a lot of power. And yeah, it does take five times as long to charge. But that number five, that's a fairly significant number, isn't it? Because running with silent running increases your power drain by a factor of five. But with ion power cells, I've just increased my power reserves by a factor of five. So, silent running? Bring it, bitch! <laughs> Do your worst! And let's not forget, I also have that thermal reactor module installed in the engine. So, my power problems are completely a thing of the past. It really is a incredibly lucky I happen to have all of these materials lying around <laughs> that just happen to be used for fabricating ion batteries and ion power cells, isn't it? Yeah, what were the odds of that happening by accident? 
And so, with our power worries now completely erased, and with the rough location of the alien containment facility gleaned from the data within the alien thermal power plant, our fearless gnome hero, yeah, that's right, I said it, fearless, <laughs> is ready to continue venturing into the depths. All that to come in the next episode of Subnautica. I hope you've enjoyed it so far, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.